We've added a catalog of items to Pascal. It's work in progress, so don't pay too much attention to the UI. Users can easily add their appliance to their home, allowing them to request for maintenance and checkups to contractors through the interface. Vibe coding a tool allowing us to place items on the grid is pretty easy. But what about placing them on walls or on the ceiling? With Pascal, we have a scene graph representing our building, the levels and the different walls it contains. Things are nested, which means the level con contains different walls, different rooms, different items, and even walls can contain items such as windows, door, or different things on the walls. From this data that you can see on the left, we can easily render our scene in 3D. And thanks to nested node, if I select the room, I can easily move different walls and the items it contains by only moving the parent. Let me quickly represent it in this diagram. We have our scene graph, for example, the building, and inside we will have levels. We can have multiple ones and so on. A level will contain multiple children, for example, walls or items. We can use different colors. It's not important what it really is, but you can see it's a nested scene graph. This is purely data, which means if you want to render it in 2D or in a different software, you can because it's just a final JSON. You can do whatever you want with it. Ultimately, you can use LLM models to generate buildings only by changing the JSON. We have our node renderer that render all the nodes recursively. But when we want to create those nodes, we create tools. Let's take the yellow. I said it was the wall. So separately from it, we have the wall tool. And what it does is simply registering to grid events to add, update, or delete node. It's not responsible to actually render the different walls. It's just updating data, which means the wall component is pretty lightweight. And there is a clear separation of concern between building walls on the grid and rendering them in 3D. This is it for every tool. We also have an item tool, which is responsible to simply add, update, and delete nodes that are item nodes. So the behavior of this tool is different. It listens to grid events to place items. Let's have a look at the item node. I switch to build mode and item. And if I take the couch, it added a preview node. I can rotate it, move it. And when I click, what it does is it add the node to our scene and create another one. But the rendering is done automatically. And if I try to add another couch, it will be blocked when they overlap. But that's a topic for another episode. To show you how it works, let's have a look at grid tiles, which is the component responsible to render the grid that you can see. And if we look at our grid, the mesh is handling events on pointer down, on pointer leave, move and up. But this mesh is in grid tasks and what we want is to catch the event in the item node. And the best way to do this communication is through events. If you go to handle pointer down, you can see that we are emitting custom events that we create grid double dot pointer down and we pass the position to simply do our custom events with TypeScript. We are using a meet library, which is a very lightweight library to create custom event system like the one you can have from the web browser API. Our emitter, it is declared inside our bus. This is where you have all the different events that we can trigger. And based on the event, you can see the type of data we pass of the payload is different. So if we look at a grid event, it simply has the position. But if we look, for example, to a wall event, you have more data that is passed. They all extend to node event, and we pass the concert node, the grid position, the position of the object, the normal, and stop propagation. So we trigger the event from grid tiles, and then our item node that is responsible to create the items, it's simply registering through grid events. For regular items, we move, we check if we can place the item, we update the node. When we click, 
we really add it to our scene graph. Thanks to this approach, we can use the undo system or redo because we are simply executing action to add, update or delete nodes. If we look at all items, if I take this painting, the logic is the same. But because our item is an item that we place on a wall, if I'm on the grid, nothing happened. But once I go towards a wall, we detect the event, we add it. When we click, we add it to the wall. How does it work? We go to wall renderer that is responsible to render our wall. Here we have our wall that is responsible to handle the different events. And in the function handler, we simply emit the event and the tools, they just register to it. We go to our item node responsible to create items. And based on the item, we will register to wall events. You can see attached to is equal to wall or wall side. This is because we have an item catalog and inside our catalog, we defined the items to what they are attached. So by default, it's to nothing. So they are on the floor, but some are attached to wall side and some, for example, a painting, a TV. And if you take a window, if I search for window, it's attached to a wall, which means both sides of the wall will be blocked. This way, you can see I can't add a TV on top of my painting, but if I go to the other side, I'm allowed to do that, even if there is a painting on the other side. But if I switch to window, I will be blocked because there is something on the other side. While if there's nothing, I can add my window. Let's add a ceiling to our room. So I can add it from there to the end of our room. And now we can attach ceiling items such as a fan. And you can see the logic is the same. If I'm on the grid, because I mean an item that is attached to the ceiling, nothing is happening. But once I enter on the ceiling, I will have this nappy effect and I'm allowed to place items on the ceiling. Another thing I forgot to mention is if I take a painting, I can right click and rotate it, which makes me in a broken state. But if I leave and come back, it's always facing the right direction. If I put it there, it's facing this wall and same for here. The rotation is calculated automatically the right way. This is because in our wall events, we also pass the normal, which allows us to calculate where our point that we are interacting with is facing and to adjust the rotation of the item automatically. Thank you for watching. Want to build production 3D apps like this? My React 3 Fiber course teaches you the exact techniques I use in client work, from performance optimization to complex 3D interactions. Through hands-on projects, you will build real applications and gain the confidence to tackle a new 3D challenge. Link in the description. Don't forget to subscribe for more devlogs and tutorials. And check out this video next to continue your 3D journey.